Uh, Harry, it's great to see you uh, once again. Um, you've always been a brilliant advocate for, for mental health. And uh, once again, you're teaming up now with the Mental Health Foundation for Mental Health Awareness Week. Just explain what the project is that you're involved in. Yeah, absolutely. So it's uh, Simply Health, that have, uh, because it's Mental Health Awareness Week, they've teamed up with the Mental Health Foundation um, to create their Take a Breath campaign, uh, which is all about encouraging people to get outside and embrace nature to improve their well-being and their mental health. Um, obviously, something that's I've experienced firsthand, so I was happy to get on board and, and encourage that and and spread that message. Um, uh, along with the campaign, the Take a Breath campaign, they've they've got an ebook which I've contributed to, which has got um, several kind of personal anecdotes from myself and, and coping mechanisms and other things that people can look into um, to benefit their well-being and um, yes yeah, so you can download that ebook through the Simply Health website uh, and also each ebook that's downloaded uh, Simply Health will make you a five pound donation to the Mental Health Foundation so it's a great campaign and I'm really happy to be involved. It's been good to hear that the message around getting out about the green theme for this year's Mental Health Awareness Week has is, is, is really seemed to, to come through in the, in the media reports. There might be some people, Harry, who would say, you know what, I've not been able to get out of bed for the last two or three days. The last thing I want to be doing is going for a walk through the countryside. And I guess we're all on a journey in regards to that. Well, what do you say to people who are in that sort of circumstance, who, who maybe can't um, foresee or, or can't even imagine a time where they could enjoy being out and about? Yeah, well, I'd say I've been there, like I've had periods where I've been there where, yeah, getting out of bed can be the hardest thing. Um, that's That can often be the biggest struggle of the day. Um, but I can guarantee you once you manage to get yourself up and about and, you know, get out there, there's many actual factual reasons why being out in nature can help. But the things that you naturally feel, well, I've actually found and, and research has been, been shown to prove that it, it does help is just the fresh air, a bit of exercise even if it's just light exercise you know that connect connection with nature you know we're human beings and there's just that natural requirement i think for us to have that connection with nature um and i think i'd say to people you know you'd, you'd be surprised you'd be surprised um that getting out going for a bit of a walk connecting with nature i think it's particularly if you're struggling it, it can you know something that seems quite small can have a huge impact positive think impact when you think back to the, the the times that you experienced the the negative mental health and the, the difficult times, how do you how do you see that now? How do you look back at that time? Because I, I imagine at the time it was very, it felt very real. It was uh, very current, and it and I, it can be all consuming, can't it? As a feeling, yeah, absolutely. That's how I describe it. Completely all consuming. Um, but I think you know you can look back on it with hope and kind of you know, positivity and feeling like, you know, even though you can remember those times, it feels, as you say, all consuming and feels like you're stuck. There is a way out. And once you're out, it's just, it's a build back up. And, you know, you then can look back and it's hard to then reconnect with those, you know, awful feelings that you felt. Um, so, yeah, it's something I look back on with, with kind of caution. It's something that I always have at the back of my mind and it, it, it motivates me to just keep living a certain lifestyle um looking after the things that are important to me um because yeah i i don't want to don't want to have to don't have to feel like that you know often people say you know if i if i knew uh, then what I know now, I wouldn't have found myself in that situation and yet we're all on this journey aren't we in regard to learning about our mental health um if we did know more about mental health and if you knew more back then you could have been away from that path or even not even near that path, you know, um, that, that could have taken you somewhere completely different, somewhere more positive and more quickly as well. It's so important that we get that right, isn't it? Yeah, very much so. And I think we're learning more as we go. And, you know, things like what we're doing today and, and a plethora of other examples um, are providing people with the with the tools required to help with their, their well-being. There's a long way to go still, I think. But um yeah, it's very important. But I think also life, you know, you're going to make mistakes that are going to lead you down, you know, difficult scenarios. Uh, and that's something that can't be avoided. But as long as you can learn from those things, you know, it's just the same. It's so cliched, but it is like you're, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone that's that's had a perfect life, you know. Um, so I think 
it's uh i think it's hard to kind of avoid things sometimes but i think as long as people are uh equipped to deal with the scenarios then that's certainly a, a good thing do you have like a, a thing that you do uh, almost a, a response now when you start to see sort of shadows of maybe things you experienced in the past do you have sort of those sort of measures you you immediately kick into place to say right I, i'm recognizing those signs I'm, I'm i'm changing the direction i'm going in yeah definitely um a big one for me is just routine um and sleep uh getting into a good routine you know if work allows trying to sort of go to bed at roughly the same time get up around the same time really simple things like that, getting enough sleep, but not just enough sleep, but sleep at the right time, you know, um, and just looking after my diet uh, and fitness, getting outside. It's a big one for me, you know, um, whether that is just getting out <coughs> for a little bit in a day, but generally for me, I prefer to do some, some good exercise like running or, or whatever it may be. Um, yeah, definitely. I, I kind of switch straight back to that when I kind of feel myself, you know, taking my foot off the you know off the gas sleep's the one for me i think you feel invincible when you're younger your lifestyle leads you to think well you know what sleep is the thing that i can cut out and i think it's parenthood is the thing that makes you realize oh hang on a minute both for my children and for myself like no sleep no way like, <laughs> like yeah, I, know. I don't know how people do it you know i i'm like i met someone the other day who's he's a lawyer and he works to like one in the morning and then he's up and starting again at eight and i'm just like I just don't like how you do that. You know, I'm like, mate, I'm in bed at like 10 o'clock. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone, everyone's different, you know. And, and like you said, for me, it's, yeah, I'm a better person when I'm well slept, for sure. Is it, is it a rock and roll thing to do now when you're, on, when you're on tour, when you get back out on tour and you're in the hotels and you've got the stopovers, you've got the long flights and you're going to be saying to the lads, 10 o'clock, it's bed. quarter to 10, quarter to 10, <laughs> it's bedtime. Is that, so, is that something you'll be yeah, able to not, do? It's not achievable on tour because you're still on stage at 10 o'clock. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much as on rock and roll as it, as it comes now. Um, but yeah, I know I like to do the gig and then kind of just cool down, like wind down, get off that kind of adrenaline. Um, and just, yeah, the, the routine changes on tour, obviously, but it just gets pushed back a bit. Um, but yeah, I think the guys, you know, you'd be surprised, they're pretty similar to me now. They don't like staying up late and being tired and, you know, particularly for the singers, their voices, you've got to look after their voices and, and physically as well. You're not as kind of, you know, you, I see these classic memes, you know, like doing doing stuff and you're like, when you're a teenager, you just do like crazy stuff. And then when you're in the 30s, you like, you sleep wrong one night you know, in the wrong position. You wake up you're like, oh, <laughs> like we, the last show we did because of the pandemic was the O2 uh, on the, uh, in November 2019 and I remember like I was like in pain for like three or four days afterwards so yeah I find like we we all find like doing a bit of exercise and just looking after ourselves because then you enjoy the tour so much more you enjoy the experience because you're not in pain and not tired you know the rock and roll days well they're still here they've just changed and they just they've yeah. changed yeah I'm afraid the McFly you know we're not we're not flying that flag that rock and roll flag we used to but we've we've handed in the white we posted the white flag now we give up you're now mcflu we are done we're done look <laughs> done thank you so much for your time harry that wasn't the end of mcfly by the way that wasn't you sensationally announcing that mcfly will no, never perform no, again was, was no, it i was no, gonna no, say no. i didn't mean to walk into showbiz exclusive but you almost gave me one there <laughs> <laughs> no all good in mcfly world we're just uh we're all together and we've just started actually in the studio together and you know fingers crossed hopeful that that the um you know, things keep improving with the pandemic and we can play some shows very soon.